Welcome to Moo Moo Math and Science. In this video, let's take a look at the periodic table. The periodic table is organized like a big grid. Each element is placed in a specific location based on its atomic structure. The elements are organized by atomic number, which represents the number of protons of each element. From the element with the lowest atomic number, one hydrogen, to the element with the highest atomic number, 118, organocin. Reading the periodic table gives you lots of information about the different elements. Let's first look at an individual box and see what information it contains. Let's look at element 6, carbon. It has a symbol of capital C. A symbol is an abbreviation for a chemical element. Symbols for each chemical element normally consist of one or two letters from the Latin alphabet and are written with the first letter capitalized. Now let's focus on the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons for carbon. The number above the atomic symbol is called the atomic number. In this case, for carbon, it's six. So it tells you that carbon has six protons. Protons have a positive charge and gives the element its properties. It can never vary. Next, let's figure out the number of electrons. Unless the element is an ion, which means it has a positive or negative charge, it will have the same number of protons and electrons. In this case, the number of electrons will be six. Because six positives and six negatives equals a neutral charge. Next, let's try to find the number of neutrons. You will notice under the C a number 12 and 11 thousandths, which is the relative mass of the element. The relative mass of an atom is the number of protons and neutrons found in the nucleus and is the average of the masses of all the isotopes of a particular atom. To find the number of neutrons of the element by using the relative mass, first round the relative mass to its nearest whole number, in this case 12. You then can use the formula mass number equals protons plus neutrons. Since you have six protons, a ma relative mass number of 12, you must have six neutrons. Now a couple of extras. Notice the color of the background. There is usually a key on the periodic table that tells you what each color stands for. In this case, the green is a non-metal. And also the atomic number can be a different color. In this case, it's black, and the key tells me that it is a solid. And finally, you can look and see what column and row it's in. The column will tell you what family it's in, and carbon is in the carbon family. Elements in the same family have similar properties and the same number of electrons in the valence levels. Except for the elements in the middle of the periodic table called the transition metals, and it doesn't work for them. It's also in row number two, so that it's its period. It's in period two. Okay, let's look at another example. Element five, boron. Boron has a symbol B. It has an atomic number of five. So it has five protons, so it have five electrons since it has a neutral charge. It has a relative mass of 10 and 81 hundredths, so I'll round that to 11. 11 minus 5 equals 6, so it has 6 neutrons. It is a metalloid based on its color, and it's a solid. And finally, it's in the boron family, 13, so I know it has 3 electrons in its outer share. And it's in period 2, which is the row number. So I hope that helps in reading the periodic table just a little bit. Thanks for watching, and Moo Moo Math uploads a new math and science video every day. Please subscribe and share.